Good morning and welcome back to another video. Today I am redoing one of my videos that I lost and I found the little scribbles, my instructions. I couldn't believe it. This is what it looks like. It's all ripped. I don't even know. It just came out of one of my notebooks. And I said, oh my goodness, I'm so happy because this was one of my favorite pair of earrings to wear all the time. I still have a pair over there, but it's all in black. But it looks like a little claw is holding that beautiful gemstone bead here. And it's just a really simple and beautiful design that I just wanted to share with you. So this is a nice beginner friendly short tutorial and it requires a very little amount of materials. I know it looks like a lot on the board, but we will not be using all of this. So that's the project. That's what we'll be working on today. One other thing I need to address is a lot of you have been saying, why aren't you wearing your jewelry? All kinds of things like that. And I'm just going to be honest. Um, I have burns on my hands. And that's what they look like right now. They're finally healing. But I have to tell you, it was so painful that I wanted nothing on my arms, hands, fingers, nothing. It was just very uncomfortable so that's why i'm not wearing any jewelry for the moment and my hands are swollen so it's just it's very uncomfortable and that's pretty much it other than that i'm fine there's nothing to worry about but we're going to move on to our material list so we're going to need some size 11s six millimeter i don't know why i have three you'll only need two six millimeter bicones some spacers those are optional and i use them right here and then some four millimeter bicones, some 15s, some super duos, some crescent bead, the two hold ones, and then a focal bead. These are 10 millimeter faceted agate beads and I love them. They're just so beautiful. An earring finding of your choice and a jump ring and a couple of head pins. And these are my three inch long ones that I love to work with. I finally got my order in. So. You're only going to need to pull a half a yard of thread for this project. It does not require much. And then I just look at my needle and wow, that thing took a beating. When I was prepping the last video, when I was working it, I, I looked at it and I said, oh my goodness, I missed an entire step. So I'm going to pay attention now and nail it and get it all good to go for you guys. So we're gonna go down on zoom so you'll be able to see nice and clearly. And all we're gonna do is pick up an alternating pattern of a super duo and a crescent bead just like this. It's hard to do this hole, just like that. And we'll do that alternating back and forth until we have a total of 12 beads, six super duo and six crescent beads. I have to pick them up, I apologize. So the first part is the hardest, just stabilizing everything. After that, all it is pretty much is a beautiful beaded bead. And as I was building this, all I kept thinking about was I'm going to turn it into a pendant because it would look amazing as a pendant. But I will not do a tutorial on that. I will post pictures because it's gonna be easy the way I'm gonna do it. The way I have it in my head, hopefully it comes out that way. So just double check, make sure you have six crescent beads and then six super duos. And then we're gonna slide it down. We're gonna leave a very small tail, just about a four inch tail. And we're gonna tie our work into a square knot, just like this. And I want it to grab, so I'm gonna kind of make sure it grabs just like that pull down and it did not grab a, in the way that I wanted. So I'm going to throw another overhand knot in there. Let's see, pull down. I want that nice and tight. So now everything's going to be all messy. And this is what I mean. This is the hardest part there. Just kind of fix it. So it looks like this. It's just going to be one of those hard starts. Now, once you get through the hard start, you're fine. So we're just going to bury this 
tail right now to get it out of our way. I'm gonna attach a needle to the tail. It's the easiest way for me, um, especially when we're working with a dainty little project like this. So all we're gonna do is just weave through the next couple of beads. So I'm gonna weave through and step out that super duo. I'm gonna pick up that thread space right here in between the super duo and the crescent. Put my needle in and pull down. I'm gonna put two knots in there and then weave right through. And then we're gonna burn as close or cut whatever you have as close as possible and I have to be very careful because I just changed the batteries in that. Now, this is the part that's really important. We have to run around and reinforce this piece because everything is too loose at the moment. So just take your time. There is absolutely no rush. And um, I pull a lot of extra thread as usual. I'm all good for that. You know that. Okay, so I'm gonna kind of just put my finger right in this area just so I can see like this when I'm going around. And then take my time, like I said, because before I had thread showing and it just looked really bad. So take it easy and go through and then you'll feel it tighten down and I'll show you where to step out. I know I'm gonna love this color way too. It's just bright and beautiful. And I really wanted to highlight those, ouch, um, 10 millimeter agate beads really bad. I've had them for a long, long time. All right, so I'm coming up on the knot. I can feel it. All right. There we go. So once we're here, we're just gonna step out of a crescent bead, just the crescent bead. Don't let it pick up that super duo. So the easiest way to explain this is I'm just gonna gently hold it like this so you'll be able to see what's going on and see how that's tucking down in there, that crescent bead. We're gonna just pick up five 11s and all we're gonna do, instead of me saying skip this, this, and this, we're just gonna skip the next crescent bead and go into the one after that. And that's it. And pull them so they sit right on top like this. All right, we'll do it two more times, same thing. So five 11s and then see how it tucks down in there skip this one and go right into this one. And then we have one more to do. Okay, five and then skip this one. Go right into here. All right, perfect. I'm gonna just pull down because my tension was a little loose. So I'm gonna pull down really hard and now I'm gonna step out the third or sometimes I'll refer to it as the middle size 11 right there. So you wanna be coming out that third 11. And now it's time to add our bicones. So we're gonna pick up one bicone and go right in to that middle or third bead of that next group and pull. It's so hard to hold on to this teeny thing, not cover it up on you guys, but you'll do this all the way around. Just add a bicone right into that middle 11. And here's the last one for a total of three bicones. All right, see how everything's really loose? This is where we have to run around three to four times just because you know the bicones are sharp and I want this a lot sturdier because it's just a beaded bead. If you look at it that way, that's all it is because we're gonna assemble it on the head pin. 
So that's why I thought how cool, you know, to make a pendant out of it as well. Why not? It'd be absolutely stunning just to put it even on a piece of leather or a piece of chain. Every time I go back to an older design, it makes me want to do more. <laughs> Play around with the design more and dress it up. And All right, keep pulling. You can hear how hard I'm pulling. You can feel the work getting tight. I want to make sure everything looks good. It's a little on the loose side. We're going to take care of business in a minute. So don't worry if it's, you know, a little wobbly here. Just keep going around those bi cones and then we'll step down. All right, let's see how that feels. And that feels really good right there. So I'm going to step down these two 11s and then right through this um, press and bead, excuse me. And then I'm gonna make a turn now. So I'm coming from the upper into this one, the lower hole. I'm gonna flip the whole piece. It's just gonna be easier to work. And now all we're gonna do is add a little tiny 15 into each space. So into the Super Duo, we'll pop a little 15 there. Into the Crescent Bead, we'll get a little 15. And for now, I'm gonna leave it flared open like this so you can see what's going on. So it's just a 15 into each bead, Super Duo, and then the Crescent Bead. And we'll do that all the way around. I'm cutting my nails too. I can't, I cannot work with long nails like this. I'm not used to it. And it, it's really hard to work with long fingernails for me I, anyway, because I'm so used to having them short. When I look back at some of the older videos, I literally cringe because I'm like, oh, <laughs> and I mean, they look nice and everything and clean, but it, they're hard to work with. Very, very hard. Okay, enough of that rant. All right, so here we go through this super duo. I want to make sure I didn't skip anything because I'm talking. And then right into the last crescent bead. And now here's where we get to really tighten everything down. Okay, so through that crescent bead. And now I'm going to turn it like this. And I'm going to start pulling down and forming it into the shape that I want. See how it looks like like claws it's really really cool all right so now all we have to do is reinforce so we're just going to go through each bead i'm going to go through a couple at a time whatever my needle wants to do and now we start pulling a little tiny knot there so we'll just run around tighten everything up Pull down. See how loose and wobbly it is? Definitely don't want that. We want this really, really sturdy. Okay. And like I said, take your time. And see all this movement in here? Now that's the only stressful part. All right, I'm almost done here. I'm gonna throw a couple knots in. Let me just see how it feels. And I give it a good pull, perfect. All right, there's way too much movement. See all this movement? That's what we need to go and do in a minute, but let's throw a couple knots right here in between that crescent bead and that little 15. Pulling the wrong way. Okay. Two knots right in there. If I could see, that would be wonderful. Oh my goodness. Okay. 
and then now we're gonna weave back through however you need to get up there I'm gonna sneak through this super duo right here and through that crescent bead if I can get in there okay because that's too much thread showing it's uh, way too much movement and at first I couldn't figure out why is this thing not um, tightening up and then I remember it when I wrote and at the very bottom I wrote double reinforce so that's where we're at now we're coming out of this upper hole of the crescent bead so all we're gonna do is run up these 11 see how wobbly and very unstable this is all we're gonna do up those two down this one oh I mean, over that one and then down these two. I just stabbed my finger. And then through the, the next crescent bead and we have plenty of room in there, so don't worry. And start pulling. So up these two, over one. And yes, I removed my finger there. Down these two. Yeah, it was driving me nuts. I was like, why Why is it so loose? It should be nice and solid like those. And then I remembered, oh, this part. And it's nothing difficult. It's just reinforcing, but. So up and down, up and down, and you'll be able to feel it get nice and solid in there. Right through here. And let's take a look. See, there's no movement now, and that's what you want. So I'm gonna weave up these two, and then I'm gonna find a place to hide a knot. So it's going to be probably right here, in between this 11 and the bicone. Yep, perfect. Because we're gonna have a bead over this area anyway, so you will not see a thing, and everything is nice and secure. There's no movement. And we're done. I, I just pulled right through that bicone. I'm ready to burn or cut whatever you have. And then we're ready to assemble this little beauty. So cute. Okay, so grab your um head pin and your beautiful bead, your 10 millimeter. We're gonna put that on first. Then we're just gonna slip this right on. Make sure you're Head pin comes out the middle of those bicones. Slide it down. Grab your six millimeter, your spacer. And then I'm gonna grab my round nose pliers. I'm gonna actually go off zoom so you can really see. So just make sure it's all even and lined up. And oh my gosh, I knew those colors would bring out that beautiful bead right there. So cool. So I'm just gonna push it away, away from me, roll those pliers like this, and then pull it back, and then remove it and put the bottom loop right in here. Grab my flat nose, and I'm gonna make a quick little turn, just like this. Hold on to that loop, and here's where I'm gonna make a really, I want this to be nice and neat. A nice, neat wrap. Perfect. And that is not going anywhere. So let's trim it down. And make sure, yep, yeah, there's a little tiny sharp spot that we want to get rid of. I don't want that sticking out. So very, very gently, I want to get in there. Okay, and make sure it's straight. Perfect. And now we'll grab our jump ring and our ear wire. <clears throat> Excuse me. Slip it on. That's not straight. Let me see. There we go. Slip it on. And then add your ear wire and close it up. 
just like that. Look at how pretty. Oh my goodness. Yeah, at first I was like, I'm not too sure about the colors. And then I put it together and I love it. So I really hope you enjoyed this video. I'm so, so glad I got to save it. Truly, you can do anything with this design. It's like a beautiful little bead cap if you want to look at it that way. So that's why I thought a pendant. So I'm going to go off, build build my second earring, and then work on a pendant. And I'll upload the video in a little bit. So I hope you all have a wonderful day. And I'll see you very soon. Take care. Bye-bye.